Hey, what's going on guys? It's Jack. Back again to bring you Mythic King Garoth. Everything you need to know from a healer point of view about getting this boss down on Mythic. For this fight, we got four healers. Uh, and you will be killing, of course, all the constructs that King Garoth is going to be creating throughout the fight. Uh, you will still have to deal with the orbs that are going to be rolling around at a pretty constant rate over the course of this fight. Position-wise, you really will be standing a lot of times in melee here. Uh, just to make sure that you're able to stay in range of the tanks as you're seeing the rain the uh, ranger kind of all packed in here with melee and the tanks are on the opposite sides with the blue and red markers or the uh, square and the x markers on them so their job of course is going to be popping any of the orbs that are going out while we're standing on the opposite side to reduce the damage that's going to be taken on the entire group so every single time we're making sure that the orbs are going to be popped only by the tanks and they're usually the ones calling out what uh, how many orbs are going to be popping at any one point in time while also analyzing how topped off the raid group is and how much they can actually pop there. Uh, I did most of my pulls uh, for progression as disc, but I ended up uh, playing holy because we had a lot of inconsistencies with the tanks of when they were going to be popping these orbs. And we even had some times where they just straight up tried to pop orbs and missed. So this became immensely frustrating, especially playing discipline where I'm preparing absorbs, I'm preparing healing and all kinds of things like that. And then all the atonements go to waste. So, you know, the annoying thing is that Disc is quite good on this fight. It just is a matter of consistency that comes up uh, of popping the orbs and being able to predict when that damage is going to be out there. Uh, even with evangelism timings, I really experimented quite a bit with them to decide if I wanted to try to, you know, play more aggressively and get an evangelism as everyone split up versus getting one uh, very early on as multiple orbs were getting kind of detonated and stuff like that. So, but as you're seeing, uh, you're still dealing with a Ruiner, the balls will get faster and faster as they're going around the room as you're seeing those right now are getting different rates. And of course the tanks are constantly popping them, making sure that they're getting rid of them. That way we're able to kind of cross the paths or across the street uh, without getting sidelined by any of the balls. You are getting the orbs that are uh, coming out at a pretty constant rate that you have to be getting out of, out of the raid for. Uh, big thing here is making sure you're not stacking on top of anybody with the red circles uh, as those orbs come out, deal a, bit, a lot of damage to you. Uh, one really easy way to uh, be getting murdered, of course, is going to be the Ruiner. Same thing as usual. Uh, but you also have to really watch out for the lanterns. Uh, these lanterns, the uh, little orange markers that he's putting down in melee range, uh, be, uh, standing near, near them, as you're seeing right there, I just took a little bit of damage uh, because he had the slam going down and the ru the uh, lanterns will still be dealing a little bit of AoE damage. So it's very important to kind of find a resting position that's not in any of the lantern ranges uh, as those are going to be going off. So mobility is just a huge factor here, making sure you're keeping in range of everybody to be healing them, while also making sure you're not standing in any lanterns, you're not standing on one of the tanks during one of the AoE smashes, and of course you're not standing in the way of any of the balls. Uh, this is the second time, of course, we're going through the initialization phase. More often than not, my uh, green group here is taking care of these ads before they're ever coming out. And one really nice plus out of playing disc for this was I was able to just add a lot, a lot of extra damage. I was finding for the group that I was assigned to, most of the time we, it wasn't uh, too necessary, and if anything, it was other groups that would be needing more assistance there uh, to deal with them. But going into this, you know, a lot of times we're able to get two of them down before they start really dealing any abilities, and we let the focus uh, for the last one basically was on the red marker where the entire time it was more or less left alone with only just the tank there to build up threat on it and deal a little bit of damage. Uh, most of the time just getting out of the raid to deal with any of those bombs wasn't too big of an issue. So our, our priority there was just getting decimations out of the group, making sure that they're spread out, and then getting back to a more or less stacked position. That way we're actually able to, you know, AoE heal, we're able to have uh, more stacked heals for when all those bombs are detonating. Now, cooldown wise a lot of times we just made sure that we were rotating cooldowns whenever we we're getting like double pops right there you're seeing for example a revival when we have doubles going off and we're having even more damage going out on top of that right here what i'm looking at is that i've got velens available and that i've got him coming off cooldown in three seconds so at this point i'm just trying to find a good opportunity where multiple bombs are going to go off at the same time um and that way i'm able to hit velens hit him and get everybody topped off really really rapidly as you're seeing doubles uh the two balls were stacked on top of each other as they spawned tanks stood right on top of them and then we were able to deal with it there uh, and again most of the time you're going to be hugging this inner circuit a lot of times balls will actually be spawning what looks like in that circuit but a, more often than not you can actually hug the very very inside of it and not even have to worry uh, about actually running into any of these balls there's a very small occasion where they will can actually spawn on the inside so you have to watch out for that but you'll mainly be looking at that uh, near the very very end of the fight 
right here, we're entering the third uh, initialization phase. And again, you're seeing just how we're keeping our group together, making sure people are standing more or less in range of each other. Uh, a lot of the times the melee will actually be standing behind these ads, which can make it a little bit more difficult for some of the AOE healing, but it's just important to watch out for this. For us, we got the green down uh, right away. So we're hugging the inside. We cross the street, hug the inside corner here, and we slowly start moving into position to deal with the purple ad. Again, every single time, just hugging this edge so we're not gonna be blowing up any of these balls. The balls that will be detonated at this very last phase, uh, they're gonna be dealing AOE raid damage to the entire group, uh, same as usual, but they'll also be giving us a debuff, which will make us take 100% more damage from the next ball that has popped. So this damage is gonna come really close to just one-shotting people. So for us, we're only popping orbs if they're within range and if they're going to be very problematic for us to deal with later on. So what I mean by that is if we can hug the inside uh, corner and have just about everybody hugging the inside corner 100% of the time, then we're gonna try to do that. And we're gonna make sure that we're only popping balls when we have to that might be inhibiting this. So if balls are spawning in the inside, we'll pop those, but we will not uh, touch the ones that are gonna be on the outer ring. I'm trying to find a good time to be able to get a lay torrent in here. Uh, and you're kind of just playing a game with the ruiner on where it's going to be spawning and which direction that it's going to be going into. So I did waste a little bit of my late torn potion there. And as you're seeing, of course, we're having you know, the demolishes going off as we're still getting more lanterns popping up and watching out and again, keep on hugging that inside uh, circle to make sure that we're keeping everybody inside. We're not making uh, touching any of the orbs when we don't need to be. And again, letting any of those uh, orbs that are going to be more of a threat that we can just deal with them one by one and take care of it there. Uh, and from there, it really just kind of repeats on itself. The most important thing that you really are going to be finding here is just getting yourself in good positions, and mainly good resting areas, because you will be preparing lots and lots of big healing uh, to deal with multiple orb pops early on before that debuff actually becomes a factor. And it's very important just to make sure that you don't kind of get lost in what you're doing and, you know, getting one shot by the boss by standing on a tank, which has happened to me, or standing in lanterns or having lanterns very close together on top of each other. So you're taking all that AOE damage and all that extra damage that you don't need to be. Those things really start coming into play. And a lot of our wipes, for example, were to, you know, people not paying attention to where the orbs were spawning from, uh, splashing each other with the, de with the decimation uh, orbs that were getting tossed on people in the AOE effect, all kinds of little things like that. Now, as we're getting out of this last initialation, initial as we're getting out of this last initialization phase, it's extremely, extremely important to be watching your lanes, watching where these balls are gonna be coming from, ensuring that they're not gonna be hitting anybody as you're crossing the street here, because one ball pop, not that big of a deal, it's kind of a pain. You don't want uh, any of them to be pop popped at really this point at all, uh, because the balls are moving so quickly that it's very uh, difficult to hit one and then run away from it and then jump back in, and more often than not, it's just unnecessary. At the end of the fight here, it's just a straight burn, making sure nobody is standing in any of the, any of the range of the balls, getting decimations out and away from other people. Uh, worst case scenario, as long as you're spreading out decimations so that nobody's getting double hit, if it's splashing on some people, it's a better sacrifice than risking people hitting orbs when they really, really shouldn't be, because that's really what's going to be wiping you there. Keep an eye on these things, and you should be able to get the fight down with no problem. Thanks for watching, guys. I hope you all enjoyed it. hope you all found it useful in getting Mythic King Garoth down. Link to the logs, my UI links, all that kind of stuff is going to be in the description below, as well as a link to the Twitch stream if you want to check me out live. Be sure to check it out. We'd love to have you there. Till then, have a good one, guys. Thank you for watching, and I'll catch you all next time.